Okay, so now we're going to analyze a truss. And the first part of the analysis is going to be done using the method of joints. Uh, notice that the forces uh, on this truss are 240 pounds horizontally and 100 pounds vertically. We're going to need to find the forces and in, the internal forces in each of the truss members. So let's come up with an approach. The first thing we need to do is strategically select uh, one of the joints where we only have or expose two unknowns when we cut a free body of the joint. Notice we have two cases here, two possible candidates, joint A or D. When we cut each of those uh, members, or either of those uh, two joints that is, we will have uh, exposed, we will expose two unknown forces. Um, so in this case we'll start with joint A, and then we'll apply equilibrium since the forces are going to be concurrent, we only have two equations of equilibrium, some of the forces along the x and some of the forces along the y. Um, after we conduct the equilibrium analysis for joint A, we will then proceed to do free body diagrams of joint B and D, and then also apply equilibrium to the joints. And so we'll have uh, all the forces in all the, the members. So first thing we want to do is um, this is 240 pounds. And P2 is 100 pounds. Uh, the free body diagram for A, we have a force from um, A to C. And we also have a force from A to B. Um, again, this is a concurrent force system, so we have to uh, apply uh, equilibrium in the x and the y direction. Uh, let us define a coordinate system x and y. And now we sum forces first along the y because we only have a component of force AE along the y. That component is going to be equal to zero. So the component F A C Y is equal to zero, and since the component along the Y is equal to zero, then uh, the force, entire force, should be equal to zero. If we sum forces along the X, notice we'll have the component of A C along the X, and F A B. Since the component since the whole force F A C is equal to zero, then the component will also be equal to zero. So F A B must also be equal to zero. Next we're going to analyze uh, joint D because it only has two unknowns. So we have the force from D to C and the force from D to B. The angle that this member makes uh, is going to be a 5, 12, and 13 angle, uh, which is the angle of our force here. So we still have the 240 pound force acting horizontally and the 100 pound force acting vertically. We can now apply equilibrium and we'll start again with the forces along the Y. Set those equal to zero. And uh, my coordinate system is going to remain the same. A vertical Y, horizontal X. So we have a negative uh, 5 over 13 FDB um, 
minus 100 pounds equal to zero. This tells me that if db is equal to negative 260 pounds, or 260 pounds in compression. And we'll indicate that with a C in parentheses. Next, we sum moments, or I'm sorry, forces along the X. And that, um, is, we're gonna have uh, negative F uh, DC. We'll have the horizontal component of BD, and that's going to be 12 over 13 F DB, and we'll have the 240 pound force as well. From this, since we know uh, DB is 260 pounds in compression, our force. DC is going to be computed 480 pounds. And this will be in tension sensors positive. Uh, always assume the direction of a force to be in tension when you draw your free body diagrams. So the last joint we're going to analyze is um, joint B. The horizontal force here is equal to zero. This is F B A, which is equal to zero. And we also have uh, the force in member B D. And we computed that um, to be negative 260 pounds. And then finally, we have the force in member BC. Um, also, uh, we have to add the reaction force BX. So we apply equilibrium to get uh, force BC. So some of the forces along the Y will equal to zero. So we got uh, FBC plus 5 over 13 FBD equals to zero. Since we have FBD is negative 260 pounds, we find that FBD is equal to 100 pounds and since it's positive this will be in tension hope this was useful i'll see you next time